Hello, people on the internet watching things. Welcome to this. A 1982 Toyota Celica Supra, fresh out of the paint booth. If you're new and you like to get caught up on why this thing is fresh out of the paint booth, it just so happens I'm giving this car away to one of you. The link is in the video description on where you can go to enter to win it. Without further ado, it's time to get back to work. Originally, I was planning on working on the V8 Celica today, but I need to get this thing all assembled so I don't have loose parts all over the shop. And you know me, I can't just assemble parts without making sure they're clean first. Oh jeez. Ha <laughs> ha. That's a happy frog. That's fresh painted new face. If you guys missed the last video where I painted these few parts on the car, there's a link up above to it if you want to get caught up on it. Otherwise, right now Fred is taking care of the couple sags I had on the passenger side door with this little razor blade scraping tool that's meant specifically for this. Basically, you just kind of run it along the sag area and you keep going until it levels out to the texture of the paint along the side of it. And then the next step. 2000 grit soft interface pad. Part of the reason why I ended up with those sags is because I was so stressed about trying to make sure I got my orange peel content on the stuff I was spraying to match the original orange peel content on the rest of the car. And somehow I managed to pull it off other than I had a couple sags. Yeah. Now the door is reassembled, I can polish it. I don't have the right size thing for this. So the sag is essentially gone. This needs to get feathered out. Add a little bit of water. Okay, Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna use some body shop grade polish, doesn't have any fillers in it. Didn't flatten it out too much. I like that, all right. How we work in. That worked good. I still got texture there, so it doesn't look like there's one smooth area that's been wet sanded. That'll do, I just gotta polish it with a higher pad than that, but. I apologize for the flickering of the light. It's science, I can't help it. This area had the tiniest bit of a sag that I didn't even notice, but you can see how that area was scraped and this is kind of blended. I'm just gonna blend a hair more. Gone. No more sag in the paint. I don't know what this was, but <sighs> it's done. Yes, I cleaned the back side of it. Ha! Like it never even happened. That right there is completely removed. That sag is gone. Same here at the area right here up the front. This is really hard to capture on camera. For those of you that know these cars, you probably noticed that there was something missing on the back of this when I bought it. And that's because there was no graphic back here. There should be. In the States, it will say Supra. Overseas, it might say Celica XX, or it might be a thin bar and have Celica 2.8 or whatever. There's various different versions of it, but it's missing. On my third coat, I was a little dry with my texture. I just moved a little bit too quickly back here. So I'm gonna smooth this out so it looks good when I have the graphic on it. So 
So that's like 98% polished out. All the little dry spots are sanded smooth. I can put this thing back on now. Don't need it for a sample. Yes, I saw it. No, I'm not gonna leave it. A little bit of POR15. Encapsulate this stuff. It's no longer an issue. There's a reason why they call rust cancer on vehicles because there really is no way to eradicate it other than completely cutting it out and removing that piece of metal entirely. So if you wanna get super technical, the only correct way to fix that would be to drill out all the spot welds and completely remove and replace this entire rear quarter panel as well as this rear taillight panel. So with that said, the best correct method would be to neutralize the chemical reaction that is occurring and encapsulating what's there to drastically slow the growth of any further corrosion. And that's what I did. When I did the detailing video on the Forester and I took the bumper covers and taillights and headlights off, just the detail behind them, well, the foam is still all good on the back side of it. Hell yeah, it was a spider. I, I will say effective and logical. I'm not crazy. I just take care of my vehicles. Am I going as absolutely nuts on this car as I could? No, I don't have enough time to. But what I am doing is leaving whoever wins this car an excellent starting point if they so choose to go nuts on this thing. Fuck <laughs> off. This is another package from Japan. Oh, if you own one of these cars, you're gonna freak out. That is a brand new old stock, genuine Toyota set of headlight whiskers for this thing. That go right here. And they do make aftermarket 3D printed ones, but nothing fits better than OEM. You guys know by now I don't screw around with giveaway cars. I want this thing to be good quality. There we go. Look at that. Genuine Toyota part. It's rubber instead of 3D printed plastic. I'll put the emblem back on. Yeah. Careful. Careful. But all this that you've seen so far isn't the purpose of today's video. The purpose of today's video is the wheels that I bought for it. So here is your first clue on the wheels and where they came from. And here's your second clue. Only the OGs are gonna figure this out this fast. The front size is a 15 by seven positive 13 offset. The rear, a 15 by seven and a half, positive six offset. I have not seen these yet, so I'm literally opening them for the first time on camera. Yeah, Japanese newspaper. Center caps. Those are sick. Oh, those are so sick. What you have right here is, in my opinion, one of the most period correct wheels for an early 80s Japanese car. While I can mount and balance wheels myself, Charlie is a lot stronger than I am and it takes strength to not accidentally slip and gouge a wheel. Pop, 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 goose. Nice, little valve steps. That's what's up. High quality wheels and tires. And the wheels are Hayashi Racing CRs, one of the most classic OG JDM wheels. These wheels first went in production in Japan in 1969. That means they've been making them for going on 54 years now. The eight spoke design stays on theme with the four spoke that came on the Toyota, but these are a 15, which means they actually sell multiple different types of performance tires for them thanks to the Mazda Miata existing, which was one of the main driving reasons for upgrading the factory 14s because you just can't get good tires for these anymore. Whoever wins this car, I hope they realize how special these wheels actually are and actually take good care of them. And thankfully, because they've been in production for so long, you can get replacements if that ever happens. Coat the backside. This should really help out with keeping 
these wheels clean. Brake dust and stuff should just hose right off of these. I'm pretty sure that stuff is terrible for you if you breathe it in. It smells so bad. Like that. 200 treadwear performance tire, 25 year old not tire. Now before I put these on and you comment, you need to lower it. I have coilovers for this car. That will be the next major modification happening to it and that will fix the ride height issue. But before that happens, I need to dry ice blast under the car. Then I'm gonna install the suspension and the exhaust and the other bits I have for it as well. How rad are those? The center is green and it, that's actual metal, it's not plastic. For testing purposes, I didn't buy lug nuts for this car yet, so I have some black and silver ones. I wanna see which looks best, then I will buy lug nuts for it. Feel free to input your suggestion below which you like the style of better, the silver or the black. Line this all up. Oh, this thing's got disc brakes in the rear. I just noticed that, I assumed it would have drums. For 1982, that's awesome. Oh yeah. Yep, I'm pretty happy I chose this offset. That, oh, <laughs> oh, that's gonna look so good with coilovers. So there's the factory offset. The wheel pretty much disappears. And there's the Hayashi offset. Literally perfect. I nailed it. I'm an idiot. I just realized I put the right side on the left. I just barely clears the brake caliper, but clearance is clearance. Black lug nuts or silver lug nuts? I think silver. Silver just, I don't know, the black kind of looks cheese ball. That looks clean. So that is a 225 tread width tire and these RT660s actually measure more out like a 235 tread width. And in my opinion, that is as wide as you're gonna get without having to modify the body on an L-type Supra. Up front, I have it staggered to a 205 tread width on a half inch narrower wheel to give you that nice chunky rubber look. Hopefully now you're starting to get a little glimmer of the vision in my head for this car once it's done, now that it has the wheels on it. And for the power level of this car, even if you were to do a 7M head swap, I feel that is the perfect level of grip. I'm gonna get Charlie's initial reaction. He has not looked yet. Seeing my reaction is one thing because I'm into Japanese cars, but Charlie's a muscle car kind of guy, so we'll see how he feels. All right. Hell yeah. That looks way better. Right? Yeah. I no, cut. That completely changes the car. So when this thing is lowered. Oh yeah. It's that gonna be. Now as far as the louvers go, I did not forget about these. I have to somehow remake this graphic and I think it used to say something else after Toyota. I'm not 100% positive, but also it has some 3D shadowing. I need a tape measure and a camera. So let me take a picture of these. I don't know if this is gonna be possible, but I'm gonna try to peel it off in one piece just so I have it, just in case. I don't know why I'm trying to do this. I feel it'd be best if I have it intact still as an example. Got it. This is seriously the thinnest piece of sticker paper ever, but at least it's intact. Oh, it's got foam on the back side. Oh, there's all kinds of intricate things in there. That's gonna be fun to sand and spray. Adjustable? There's like these little metal rods that go along the bottom. It almost looks like they're adjustable, but no, there's no way these are adjustable. That should be foam, but it's hard as a rock. Luckily, I have this exact stuff so I can replace it. I don't have enough time to do it in this video, but this will get painted in satin black. Oh, that's disgusting. I can't put that on like that. I ordered 300 pounds of dry ice, and next week I'm going to dry ice blast 
the underside of this car because I have a new dry ice machine. Oh, and in case you were wondering about the corrosion on the back side of the trunk where I fixed it on the top side, this has all been wire brushed and coated in POR as well, so it's all treated and encapsulated. Oh, that's where that goes. I am amazed that a car this old, I didn't break a single one of these tabs taking this off. As far as the V8 Celica goes, I will have the engine in August as of yesterday's confirmation from the engine builder, which works out perfectly the timing of this thing. I should have this car finished up by the time the engine is arriving. I know some of you are wondering why I would start another project in the middle of a current project, and that is the main reason why. I just didn't have enough work on that car before the engine would get here. Plus, personally, it's satisfying for me to see the reaction of a person when they win a car that I did a build series on on my channel. It's just kind of a win-win. It's all a lot of fun. So uh, the link in the video description below and where you guys can go to enter to win that. It's just a little over a month left. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.